So, as I said, this film is The Beast in Heat. Now, like a lot of these exploitation films, it's got many alternative titles. Yep. So, SS Hell Camp, which I believe it's called in this country, mm-hmm. um, or in America, rather. SS Experiment Camp 2, <laughs> randomly. And my favourite, Horrifying Experiments of SS Last Days. <laughs> you know, I think the reason why most people go with Beast in, The Beast in Heat is... As we've we've said before, particularly on when I came on the Lemon configuration, is a lot of these films have basically the same title. They're like SS Love Camp, SS Experiment Camp, Love Camp Seven, Experiment Love Camp, Women's Seven. Love Camp Number Nine. It's or very whatever. difficult. So calling it the Beast and Heat is probably the best. The, everyone knows that film. Even you know, well, anyone who knows exploitation cinema, that name stands out. Yeah, yeah. And this is directed by Luigi Batzella under the alias Ivan Katansky. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, not his only Nazi exploitation film. He has another one called Achtung the Desert Tigers, which is a great name. That's a fucking great name. <laughs> Somehow worse than this. Even It's just more boring. I've seen it. Um, I did watch a few Nazi exploitation all, films all for partisans the partisans and no experiments. <laughs> Yeah, it is basically it's like a, will discuss, a proper yeah. war film, which is not really what you want. That's kind of yeah, a bit boring. Um, so Tom, for the benefit of the audience, um, and yeah, obviously, look, apart from obviously the Nazi stuff, obviously yeah. there's going to be spoilers because we're going to spoil the absolute shit out of yeah. it. So just be wary. What is the story of the Beast in Heat? Fuck knows. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But if I had to guess based on the multiple times I've tried to understand the story, there appears to be two stories happening at the same time. One is about a group of partisans, specifically a guy in there who's basically a pacifist, who is a partisan that doesn't want to kill Nazis. (laughs) So he kind of blows up railways after the trains have gone by so that he doesn't kill anyone on the munitions trains, for example. So it's about partisans dealing with the Nazis hunting them down. Whilst at the same time, there is a standard Nazi exploitation film happening of people being tortured under the guise of Nazi super experiments. And somehow these two things come together because the scientist in charge of the experiments is also put in charge of hunting down the partisans. Because I don't know how a scientist ends up taking on that role, but these two storylines come together. Yeah, very, very, very vaguely. Now, before we kind of talk about the film itself, I have to ask you, because, you know, we've had you on, you know, I've done these different shows with you, where we do talk about the Nazis, and, you know, I don't want to cast any aspersions, but there there is a fascination on your part, I'm trying to be sort of, you know, I'm not trying to make out that you're a secret Nazi or anything like that. Um, What is it about... Nazi, well, World War Two, yeah. really. It's just World War Two, isn't it? Yeah, more well, than just Nazis. Yeah, you don't just one day start watching Nazi exploitation films. Mm. For me, I started be. I was always interested in history, World War Two history, just a fan of modern history. Yeah, and I was also a fan of cinema. So you start watching more movies. That's a you know, where Eagles Dare, things like that. Mm. A lot of these films are historically inaccurate, so I just got curious as to how historically inaccurate films, World War II films, could get. And at one end of the scale, there's quite innocent stuff like Indiana Jones Mm. and Bedknobs and Broomsticks, where (laughs) the Nazis are in it. And then at the other end of the scale, you have things like Shockwaves and Ilsa, where the Nazis are these sadomasochists or zombies. Mm. And the one thing that connects all these films, for me, that I find fascinating is that the Nazis seem to be the ultimate cinematic villain. Like, they're, you know, if you zombies aren't scary, but if you make them Nazi zombies, they become evil, you know? It's almost like the next stage of evil is to make something Nazis or to stick Nazis in your film. Like like I said, with Bedknobs and Broomsticks, it's not enough that all the events happen in that film. There has to be a Nazi invasion at the end of the film. Or well, Sound of Music as well. And sound of Music, yeah. It's, you know, it's so... I've always just been intrigued as to how universal they are as villains and then looking into as far as you can go with that. And perhaps the Beast in Heat, to bring things back, is as far as you can go with that. But all these all these Nazi exploitation films fit into that sort of pattern of the ultimate cinematic villain 
being the Nazi. Yeah. For me, anyway. Yeah. Now, this film, it's, well, it's quite interesting. What I was going to say is, so, a couple of years before this came out, so this mm-hmm. came out in 1977, I believe. Right. 1975, this film, uh, Ilsa She-Wolf of the SS, yeah. comes out. Now, to me, this is in a lot of ways, a pretty blatant rip-off of that. Yes. The, Would you not agree? The, the main frown line in this, the one yes. running the camp, uh, not camp, in this she's, well, God knows what she's running in this, <laughs> but um, the, the main German scientist in this, she's blatantly an Ilsa Clone. knockoff. Yeah. Um, except in this, she's way more sexualized. like she's definitely more up for it. Yeah. Ilsa, Ilsa seemed to not really be herself sexual until... She falls in love with the American guy. I mean, that's a different film entirely. Whereas <laughs> the the German scientist in this, she's just constantly randy. She's always pretty much. Just, yeah, it's very unusual. It's very bizarre. But yeah. yeah, absolutely, incredibly, incredibly, incredibly bizarre. Yeah. Um. Now, yeah, I was going to say one of the things about this film because obviously we've talked about other Nazi exploitation yeah. films on shows. Mm-hmm. Now difference between this and you know Starpa's last orgy SS experiment camp yeah. love camp 7 is there is no camp per no. se so and that's why they dropped yeah. the camp title <laughs> yeah it just they just there's some weird nazi sort of base of some sort yeah where are they they're just in a in a yeah. chateau or a village or a castle or just somewhere yeah, so that in itself is kind of different from mm-hmm. like the other sort yeah. of similar films that came out in this period. Um, so, mm. Yeah, and those other films also they you know the people being experimented on are therefore camp prisoners or whatever prisoners. This is just random people they've gathered up. Yeah, they just gather up random old women or partisans or the sons of partisans. Yeah. yeah, this one is the only film that I'm aware of, at least that I've seen. One of the only Nazi exploitation films that doesn't have Jewish characters in it. Yeah, because yeah, Gustavo's Lost Orgy. It's clearly Jewish women. Yeah, I think in the other two, well, Love Camp Seven. It's some of the women are Jewish, or are they all Jewish? I can't. Off the top of my head, I think they're meant to be all Jewish. Yeah. SS Experiment Camp, it's undertones that they're Jews, but it's yeah. not explicitly said that they're Jewish women. They're doing these weird experiments on involving like high, you no know, sex in water now tanks you, and now stuff you mention like it, that. I think this is one of the few where it's more to do with the war than mm. it is to do with just the world of camps. You know, yeah, which is interesting because I don't know, like I don't know how you, well, you don't like this film really no do i don't <laughs> <laughs> okay i don't I, it's a shit film i find it very entertaining but it is shit do you think the fact that it, they what clearly batsella has tried to do is try and make it more of like an actual war film and still have those kind of experiments in there it's kind of feels like two different films having a fight yes really? it's, it's very it's weird pretty much hit the nail on the head that's not the only reason i don't like it but that is a big thing is the two the two elements don't gel together. Mm. They probably could in better hands or with a bigger budget or whatever. But it's just yeah, it's just the juxtaposition between one scene and then the other. You'll be there'll be the beast in heat doing his thing in the cage, people being tortured, and the next thing, partisans in the wood discussing trains. And you're just like, What? What's happening? What's the connection? <laughs> Why am I yeah, you know, I'm not exactly. prepared for the next scene, you know? Yeah. Um but the main reason that this film just doesn't work is because it's really really inept that's yeah. kind of how i how i put it so for example the music in this film is absolutely horrendous um the opening title music just to me sounds like bad 80s mega drive music it's like dun 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 or like that basically now you mentioned the opening titles can we just please acknowledge as we said we were going to <laughs> the weird use of color so instead of a standard swastika like a black swastika on a white red background. It's a pink swastika on a blue background. <laughs> Who the hell designed that? It doesn't make any sense. It's amazing. <laughs> but in terms of the music, weirdly, the music I think potentially could be the best part of this. Mm. It has that weird synthy sound. Um, when I say the best part, that is not to say it's good music. No, it's just that probably lets people know how bad the rest is. But yeah, the music is weird. Yeah, I know I keep saying weird, but it's very <laughs> difficult to talk about this film. Yeah, well, okay, and as well as that, um, now on the last show with mm-hmm. uh, Scott Priestley, our friend, um, whoop. But, yeah, whoop to 
shout out to Scott. Um, we watched a film where it, you can watch it in English dubbed, or you yes. can watch it in its original language subtitled. And I mentioned like normally with films not in the English language, you want to avoid the dubbed version because yeah. it's a bit cheesy. It sort of makes the films a bit silly, even when they're not meant to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't have the option with this film. No, we did not. But we suffered. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, it's one of the, again. It's one of these films you're probably better off watching it in its dubbed version because the dubbing in this is absolutely hilarious. It sounds like two or three people have done all the dubbing. Potentially, it wouldn't Potentially. surprise me. It's that amazing dubbing where it's almost as if the people haven't seen the film. They're just reading in a booth, just straight off the sheet, without having seen the film. Yeah, um, there's the amazing. Our favourite dubbing, yeah. <laughs> the, the head of the partisans, who sounds like a sort of someone doing a John Wayne impression, <laughs> like a sort of, hey, where you want to go run, up run. the mountain there, and you keep an eye, the Germans are going to be coming, and you're like, if you're going to choose somebody to dub, i.e. to ex- express what you the, the listener would not understand normally, why have you chosen someone that nobody can understand? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> How cheap oh, are, are, is your budget that you can only afford wow. people with speech impediments to do the dubbing? Yeah, yeah. Is uh, some of the Nazi officers all talk like this? <laughs> and what I love, and this film is not the only film guilty of it, but whenever there's dubbing in a film and people start screaming or shouting, they insist on dubbing the screaming and shouting as yeah. well, as if there's different language barriers for screaming. Just so you get people going, "Hey, ah!" <laughs> like really l- lacklustered <laughs> screams of agony. It just. Uh, uh, my favourite, which um, again we'll talk about this in more detail later, yeah. where like the woman getting her nails pulled off, I was like, "Oh, you are hurting me!" <laughs> yeah, stop! You're hurting me. As if they're going to go, "Oh Jesus, stop the torture! Stop the torture! Oh, We're hurting this no. poor lady." <laughs> yeah. Oh Christ. <laughs> yeah, that's a great line. Um, yeah. Other things. Um, the so the the beast of the title. Is this the beast, which is in heat? In apparently. heat, yes. Yeah. A short, hairy man in a cage. At different points, like the bars wobble. It's clearly not like iron. The, the whole fucking beast in heat thing is one of the most irritating and morally repugnant. I have to say, yeah, part of this film. So, in terms of in terms of why I don't like this film, and this this will sound completely hypocritical or paradoxical, <laughs> but. Mm. Even by Nazi ex- exploitation standards, and as we've expressed so far, a lot of these films are sent concentration camps and involve exper- sexualized experiments. Most people are probably going to think that these films are already mor- morally these films well, yeah. are already morally <laughs> repugnant. Pretty but much. in this, the whole beast in heat, who essentially there's extended scenes of him raping women, I just find very difficult to watch. I guess you're supposed to, and in which case it's done its job, but they're just going for too long. They don't serve a purpose. And I'm not sure whether I'm... Su- is this meant to be a sort of torture porn experience for me? Am I supposed to be... Because hmm. a lot of the time, these kinds of films are made for people with Nazi-esque fetishes, fascist <laughs> fetishes, or s and fetishes. Hmm. So so I get why a lot of these films are... like I get why Ilsa is a turn-on for some people, or, or was designed to be. This film, if you're turned on by The Beast in Heat, yeah. I find it it's basically almost rape fantasy porn. Pretty much. So yeah. morally that's kind of one of the areas where I draw the line, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I do find the film very funny a lot of it, but oh, yeah. I'm not getting those, on my high horse by the way. I'm just saying, yeah. No. I mean those bits they do go on for a very very long time. And it doesn't appear to be a lot of point to them other than to well, I was going to say titillate, but could anyone really find this titillating? I find it hard to believe. Exactly. That's that, that's kind of my point. I'm like, what am I... Su- is this meant to be sexual or... or you know, I, I think <laughs> it's meant to be, but it really isn't. Yeah, it's... For a film with a lot of nudity in it, it is very unsexy. Yeah. Really, really unsexy. But the other element with with the whole... The Beast himself... Like initially, they're talking about it as this grand Nazi experiment. We're going to, cre- of take course, conquered races and make them beasts of burden, who will just basically um, fuck to breed and then work as our slaves. And then they reveal the beast, and it's just a hairy dwarf <laughs> who's got a unibrow and <laughs> and sort of has sex with people. But as you as, as you've said before, there's this thing about Italian films where the women are always naked and most of the time the men are fully dressed the beast is naked but i don't think you ever see 
his his penis. <laughs> See other men's penises when they're being yeah. tortured, but not him. There's a weird sort of like compromise where they're like, we won't we won't show too much mm. um, naked flesh in this rape scene. Yeah, it's all yeah, just quite. Yeah, quite bizarre. And then you're right. I mean, in all these kind of Italian exploitation films, it's not just Nazi exploitation films. There seems to be this thing where women completely naked, men no nudity whatsoever. They've just got their trousers on, they've got all their clothes on, and are meant to be having sex. A brilliant scene earlier oh, on where the, the so comedian or somebody's having sex with, I, I'm guessing she's a prostitute and an informant. Yeah. She's the one that ends up double crossing. Yeah. And yeah, she's riding him, and he and we were both like, he still has his trousers on. So is she just dry humping him? I mean, where's this going? I think that might be a legal thing, like in Italy or in censorship laws, you couldn't show an erect penis or something. Yeah. Or maybe it's just because basically these films are made for a heterosexual male audience Pretty and they're much, just like yeah. show some tits well, no nobody do wants you see, to see a lot a of dick and balls in this you do see a lot of dick and balls though but not his dick and balls not his particular dick and balls yeah. just in the weird torture scenes where people are being that with that bit where the guy's been as we said he's being dunked in the water yeah and but his cock and balls are basically in just right eye in line, full view of the camera eye line and you're just like I don't want to see that fuck <laughs> Oh dear! Um, I thought we digress. Hmm. Where were we? <laughs> yeah, no. Where were we? Yeah. So this film is very bad. It's a very badly made film. It's very badly shot. Um, it's not very well framed. Um, there's a lot of zooms. I mean, it's an Italian exploitation the zooms film. Are great. They're like he's yeah. the guy that sticks a knife in the rock and then zoom on the knife. Yeah, and then move on. It's not quite Umberto Lenzi kind of level of like zooming like a million times a film, but yeah, it's yeah you do get a lot. But that's of those. a good comparison. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, so while watching the film, doesn't appear to be that much of an effects budget. It's one of those films where people get shot and they fall over in a hysterical way. It's great. What they lack in blood, they make up for in theatrical falling to the ground. <laughs> people like. It's almost like silent movie deaths. It, it People really are is, just yeah. very floundering their arms and legs in the air when they get shot. There's an old woman who gets shot, and her death uh, is meant to be upsetting, but I laughed. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, this film's really, really bad taste. Um, after that, there's a scene where a baby gets shot, but it basically gets flung up in the air and shot in midair, like he's doing fucking, what, clay pigeon shooting? So much inappropriate shit happens in this film that I forget things, and I forgot about <laughs> that baby. They don't just get... You know, you gather they're going to kill the baby... But the way they do it, as you say, they throw it in the air. And as you say, it's like clay pigeon shooting. Uh, and you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Um, there's the infamous scene that anyone who knows anything about this film, there's two scenes that people always quote. Um, there's a scene where there's a car with a really shit Nazi flag on the front. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a lot of really bad Nazi flags in this. So he's trying to a Nazi exploitation really, film if you don't have flags yeah in every shot <laughs> yeah there's this car that drives up to the front of the base and there's this giant red swastika right at the front of the base it like, makes no yeah. sense yeah makes no sense because any war film serious or otherwise I've seen you know the Nazis will have flags drapes draping out the windows perhaps but they wouldn't have this big like plastic swastika <laughs> in the middle of the drive <laughs> Um, but Greg, sorry. Oh no, it's just uh, just the ridiculousness like, of it. It's just I I never thought of this because I'm not gonna lie, I've seen this film about two or three times, and like I've never considered it from a strategic perspective. It makes no sense to have a giant swastika at the front of your base. Yeah, it's like a video game. It is like you know. It reminded me of um you know the uh, statue park level in Goldeneye. Just oh, right. random, random statues yes. just there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, I haven't played Golden Knight in a very, very long time. But yeah, I do see <laughs> what you mean, actually. Yeah. But anyway, they're driving up to the front, and this giant red swastika, like, how they've shot the, the scene makes literally no sense whatsoever. But it's shot in a way where the light is behind the camera, and you can see the shadow of the cameraman and, like, probably the director in the background as the car's walking past. It's right in the front of the shot and you can't miss it. Clear as fucking crystal. I'm like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Why didn't they reshoot this? As I said at the time, I, I felt they just couldn't be bothered. Probably. Because <laughs> they probably thought, ah, fuck it. It's you just know. like, it's the Ed Wood thing, isn't it? Yeah. Where it's like, one take, oh, one take, do. great, done. Next, don't care. This film's not going to win any Oscars. 
It's Beast and Heat. No one's going to care. <laughs> but, What's well. weird about that shot as well is you don't even see that red swastika in all its glory. So they could have easily had just have taken it out and put it in in the next scene. But they went, no, 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 we put it there now. No, it's true. Um, there's an explosion that takes place right near the beginning, which looks really, really shit and fake. Um, there's a model plane, which is a kind of a model plane yeah which turns up about two or three times near the end which is meant to be like a bomber plane but it's clearly a model that they've done some kind of shit stop motion animation with it's almost it's like, hilarious yeah you, know, you used to get those little model planes that you could attach to like a ceiling fan it was just going round in circles oh, so bad and then yeah uh, there's the bit that everyone knows it's the bit with the guinea pigs so the guinea pigs that's my favorite bit yeah so there's this infamous torture i don't know if it's medieval maybe you know I more believe about it's medieval me. i remember hearing about it in the uh, yeah. london dungeon yeah. <laughs> there you go go to the london dungeon everyone you learn about these things um <laughs> yeah basically the idea is that you got these rats and you put a bucket or something over the rats and you heat it and to escape they have to eat through well, flesh, whatever, yeah, to try and the get stomach. out. Yeah, stomach, when we put it in your stomach, yeah. yeah. So it makes sense. It's pretty, on paper, it sounds like a pretty violent thing to do. Mm-hmm. But what ruins it is in this film, why they couldn't use real rats, I don't know. They've taken two guinea pigs, painted <laughs> them black, and put them on the woman's stomach. And it's like, clearly guinea pigs, they're not threatening in the slightest. They're very happy and very cheerful to be there. Guinea pigs, they're just sitting there. <laughs> and the one thing. of them falls off. I'm not even sure it falls off. I think it just walks <laughs> just, off. Like it's, it's bored. Like, Fuck this. Yeah. Oh my god. That's brilliant. And of course, you missed out your favourite bit, Greg. Oh, the forward roll. Oh yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. So um, there are many, many battle. Well, there's like two big kind of shootout scenes in this film. And what the? Uh, I don't know you what film they've taken this footage from but what they've done is they spliced in footage from another well film with a bigger budget yeah let's put it that way they've done that and spliced it into the film it's hilarious it's like it's so and, blatant and it's very obvious because it's even like a different tone it's i always think it's slightly yeah. redder when it's the other film yeah it's clearly like a different film stock is different color grading all this kind of stuff so yeah it's clearly a film footage from a different film altogether they splice into this one they these long battles with these partisans against the nazis and the first one takes place for five minutes like on the, the other show like one of the gimmicks we use is like the body count it's not my idea everybody um but like basically they you know trying to count like number of people dying in a scene like that is just impossible because all these people are like dying there's no blood it's all these people just throwing themselves here there and everywhere yeah and it goes on for five minutes and it's just random just yeah <laughs> violence essentially well, it's, a, it's a it's a war movie it's a battle sequence you know it's very hard to keep up yeah, absolutely. And yes, as you mentioned, in this scene is like honestly one of my favourite things in this film. It happens more than once actually in the film. One the character like is trying to get a gun and instead of diving for the gun, like in a normal way, he does a really, really, really like overly elaborate forward roll <laughs> just in the middle of this battle. It's just oh my god, it's amazing. There's so funny. Of, there's there's a couple of similar moments where there'll be an explosion and somebody people don't just jump out the way, they theatrically like throw themselves sideways or almost do a somersault, or there'll be an explosion, people will jump towards the explosion. <laughs> but yeah, that that um that role is something impressive. Yeah. And it's a bit like when we were saying earlier, when people get shot and they fall down, it's almost like people have decided this is my moment. The all the the directors told me just to fall down, but I'm gonna make an effort. I'm going to get noticed. I'm going to do a forward roll and pick up that gun. Yeah, it's not just a moment. It's a perfect moment to do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. And, yeah, there's two battles. There's that battle and the battle near the end. And I'm kind of torn because they are very funny. Yes. But the bits with the... the all right, I say, obviously, the film's shit. I'm just... Yes. You know, there's no, like, trying to hide this. The film is really shit. But... The bits, at least, with the Beast mm-hmm. and Dr. Crouch and, you know, all the Nazi stuff, yeah. that's at least bad taste, kind of interesting. All the bits yeah. with the partisans, for the most part, are really boring, unfortunately. Yeah. One of the issues I've got with the partisans is you've got um, the sort of the Greek guy 
who's yeah. like the older guy who I think is meant to be the leader. And then you've got the main character who looks like Charles Bronson. Oh, yeah. And they are both got really impressive tashes. And you've got all these other random partisans, like, uh, well, apart from our guy who hasn't been dubbed very well. And rah, 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 yeah, yeah, rah, yeah, sounds Western, like that. Western partisan. And then there's all the other characters. And it's just like, I don't know, it's complaining about characterization in a film like The Beast and Heat is a moot point, admittedly, but it's like... But you want to not I be don't care about these people. people. Yeah, exactly. And there's this all these subplots that don't really make any sense the first time that I... Well, it didn't make sense to me, anyway, the first time yeah. I watched it. Like, there's... Like, one of the women, like, double-crosses them, but it's not clear why she double-crosses them. Is that the blonde one? Yeah. Yeah, she's the one who he's dry humping the the curve or whatever at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and it took me a while to figure it out as well. But I think she's pretending to collaborate with the Germans in order to get information and helps the partisans. But the partisans don't trust her. Oh, uh, same with the priest. The partisans don't trust the priest, even though all he does is help them. So th- nobody's motivation or the reason why they suspect people in this film make any real sense. It's just almost like conversation just for its own sake. Yeah, and that kind of bogged the film down. Mm. Like I said, look, the film's not good anyway, but if you're going to, you know, the worst thing you can do when you're a film is be boring yeah. or not interesting, and they're just not interesting at all. thing is, with, with the whole Nazi exploitation subgenre, most of the time what these things are trying to present is, you know, evil Nazis performing these sadistic experiments mm. and when it does that in the film it's a proper nazi exploitation film yeah the partisan stuff as we said before they're trying to have a war movie and an exploitation nazi movie and the two don't sync very well so no. when you see modern day references to nazi exploitation films take um rob zombie's little mini trailer for werewolf oh, yeah. in the ss that's very <laughs> much a tick list or or a love letter to films like Ilsa and yeah. the experiment elements in this film. But the Partisans thing is so just stuck onto the side, like an ill-fitting just padded. side panel, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, with these films, I mean, we said this on the Lamin configuration as mm-hmm. well. Like, apart from Ilsa, all the experiments don't seem to have a purpose. I mean, particularly in this film, like, I have no idea, like, what the fuck the purpose of turning this man into, like, some randy beast man is meant to be doing all, uh, at all all i gather from the the purpose um <laughs> is what they said at the beginning about okay so we're going to create a, a race of obedient slaves so that they're, they're going to be dumb um and they'll all they'll be good at is is breeding and working so i think that's what they're trying to create right that being said <laughs> Like I said, Dr. Whatever her name is. Crouch, yeah. Dr. Crouch is always getting her always getting well, her rocks off anyway, which bears no t- understanding, as far as I, I'm aware, of anything to do with like medical practice. When she wants to get laid, she just starts touching people up. Mm. Um, watching they, they watch the beast rape people as if they're getting any scientific knowledge from watching it. Yeah. And then the random tortures that happen... Which are when I say random, I mean they're they, so they, random. They're just the, the, not only are the purpose to the tortures random. The, the tortures themselves are just random, different types of torture. Yeah, and you're like, is this? Are you actually a scientist? Like, yeah, mm. yeah, I agree. And it's quite funny because, like, literally the very, very opening scene of the film is where they have the discussion about this is wrong. Like, yeah, the, there has to be a there has one, to be an opposing doctor who has, only appears in that scene. By the way. Yeah, mini philosophical conversation. As we said, like, do doctors normally have these mini philosophical <laughs> conversations just at the beginning of the experiment? Or in this case, what's brilliant is the beast has already been created and this doctor chooses now to speak up and go, I don't think this is such a good idea. It's, like, it's no. a bit late. <laughs> I oppose these experiments that apparently they've been doing for ages and all of a sudden he's like, I don't I agree with this. I all of a sudden this. have an issue with this. In no emotion whatsoever on his face is like, yeah, I just I don't agree, and yeah, it's it's just so inconsistent because yeah, at the start of the film, yeah, they're trying to create this beast, yeah. okay, fair enough, which is just a hairy bloke, yeah, <laughs> some short hairy bloke, and then I don't know, like she 
just talks to other Nazis for a bit. And then it's like, well, we want to know where these partisans are. So I think the torture is meant to be kind of torturing like the, the locals to find out where the partisans mm-hmm. are. Yeah. And it almost becomes like part of that whole side plot, which is why you've got a woman with electrodes on her vagina, as you do, <laughs> that well known torture. Yeah. Or the bloke being dunked upside down into like a trough. Or the woman, there was a woman on like a fucking, you know, the circus, like the knife thrower. Yeah. She was tied to something like that and she had random blood all over She'd her. She'd already been tossed. We don't even know what happened to her. Yeah. Or the guinea pigs, as we already but mentioned. Th- th- okay. So those partisan tortures happen in the same location as where the beast is yeah. being kept in the cage. So I'm, in my mind, I'm like, so is this still the lab that the scientist is using and they're so short on space that they have to torture the partisans in the same location, in the lab? Because if they're not experiments, then that's all that's happening there. And it, you have to agree, it is weird that they've hired this scientist who's clearly busy creating a race of slaves. She's clearly busy doing that, but they've called her in to help with partisans. Like, why would a scientist... Would you call a scientist in to help with knife crime in London? <laughs> no. So why would the Nazis use a scientist to kind of hunt down partisans in the, mm. in the uh, forest? Yeah, I don't know. It, it doesn't really make a lot of sense, yeah. I know it doesn't matter, because it's only a <laughs> silly little B-movie from the 70s, and it's Nazi yeah. exploitation. But even by the low standards, other Nazi exploitation films makes sense also as you say um ss experiment oh gestapo's last orgy and even the yeah. ss experiment camp this is experiment kind that, of makes sense you know they, they do the whole thing about testing them for heat uh cold in that one which yeah. is a, an experiment the nazis actually did yeah so some of it makes sense but this film doesn't even bother to, to make sense make the limited sense that you most of the films try no no it really doesn't not at all but it was enjoyable watching it again Great. yeah <laughs> i've got to say overall i mean just summing it up i mean like we said it is very very bad taste in places the story is kind of hard to follow with the partisans and they yeah i don't know it just all felt very padded on there are far too many random deaths um but to me it's kind of like a so bad it's good movie there's it's just i can enjoy it in spite of its shitness like that's why i've chosen it for this show as opposed to like other video nasties Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah i just i don't know i get a very perverse enjoyment out of it apart from the rapey stuff yeah yeah. apart from the obvious stuff yeah i think that i think that it's an interesting choice because i think the reason why i've i hated so much is because of the as you say the rapey stuff and therefore i find it hard to enjoy it that being said i've enjoyed watching it this time round. it's watching it with me mate that's yeah what it is. watching it with you mate. <laughs> we've had a great date movie um yeah what i find watching this time round that i didn't really bother with other times is like for me it's not a question of it's so bad it's good it's so bad it's bad <laughs> other times I've watched it I have not had the same enjoyment no. but watching it with somebody else maybe this will come into the date aspect mm. um, pointing out all oh, the forward roll and the guinea pig silliness and the this silliness and the the big red swastika and, and the shadow that kind of pointing out the errors surpasses the film that ends up being the entertaining aspect rather than the film which I guess you get with a lot of cult b movies like yeah. troll 2 in the room and stuff that's kind of the fun so potentially that's what is it's got going for it it's definitely not a good solo movie to watch no although <laughs> having said that the other times i watched it i was by myself and i still kind of enjoyed it for what it is uh, it's the same thing like Rhea. i mean from what i remember of the show her experience was it's like yeah the sexual violence don't like that really at all um yeah. but yeah if there's enough in there which is just so patently ridiculous like the guinea pigs, for example, that it's just like you the cannot possibly take this film seriously. When, when um, the part that guy who's uh, the partisan who's hiding from the Germans and he goes to surrender and his mum knocks him out of the frying pan, <laughs> and it's not meant to be funny, but it's like seriously, <laughs> that is comedy that. gold. <laughs> oh Christ! Oh uh, yeah. Um, my favourite thing we haven't <laughs> talked about is that there's a priest in the film, and he does have the immortal line. Oh uh, fuck! I'm going to see if I can find it in my notes. Oh shit! Uh, da, 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 da. The priest who takes on about five 
hardened Here Nazis. Yeah, he one at a time. They don't jump them all at the same time. He just punches them all one by oh, one. Oh god, yeah, it's so fucking stupid. Yeah, he manages. He's man of the cloth, and he manages to fight off five Nazi soldiers five, by himself. Five Wehrmacht soldiers. By himself. With his fists. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I found like It's like, the Lord won't betray you. He's the best. Yeah, he's the best. Which is a the great The way they line. dub it is it like, he's the best. <laughs> Isn't he great? Oh, I love God. Uh, he's so cool. That's he, how they, he talks about it. <laughs> <laughs> he's the best. Yeah. Um, I think, I think overall, I think the story of the film is meant to be about the futility of war, but really that's not what I got out of it I, at all. I got about the, the <laughs> futility of filmmaking. That's what I got yeah. out of this. Yes. Um, so if I was rating this film out of five, it, it's not a good film. I find it enjoyable as a bad movie, so I can't say it's like a one. It's a two out of five because it's clearly bad, and it's bad in hilarious ways. And there's enough kind of stuff which is so outrageous and just horrendously shit that I find it entertaining. So, yeah, I would give it a two out of five in that regard. Is zero an option or is one the minimal? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, come on. It can't be that fucking okay. bad. Come I'm, on, I'm assuming that our range is literally one to five. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, prior to watching it today, I would have given it a one. I, I think I'd give it a two oh, because... Okay. It's a lot more fun One you over watching again. it, and then you can with uh, with somebody else, yeah. And then having that experience that I would normally watch with a film, like I said, with Troll Two or something, yeah. I would not normally apply that way of watching a film with this, but now that I have, I've enjoyed it a lot more. So it's, it's bumped it up to a two. Yeah, let's put it this way: I had much more fun watching this than the Human Centipede Three, which was just <laughs> boring yes. as all shit, as we mentioned. Hey, you know. If you uh, yeah want to hear my full thoughts on the Human Centipede one, two, and three, listen to the episode when we talked about that. Now this is the interesting one as a date movie. So one is sort of Netflix and chill. I have a feeling mm-hmm. it's not going to be a one in that regard. Um, five is Cannibal Holocaust, obviously. <laughs> now, from my regard, I would give this a four out of five. Now, clearly, Nazi exploitation films you're probably not going to, unless you're with someone who was possibly into that, you're yeah. probably not going to watch a film like this on a date. But let's say you did. <laughs> there are possibly worst films out there that you could choose than this. As I said, it's Is so it? bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, go on, Holocaust, that. for example. Or, well, yeah, there are other films we could yeah, mention. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just off the top of my head, something like August Underground would be way worse a choice mm-hmm. than this. Um, you could kind of maybe have a bit of a laugh with it if they were of that kind of sense of humour where they would maybe appreciate it because it's so bad that mm-hmm. if they didn't take it seriously like i mean to me i find it hard to believe anyone could possibly be offended by this unless you were really really offended by like well you know rape fair enough okay i can understand yeah. that aspect of it but like just <laughs> you know, just yeah it, if you were like i don't know really sensitive about like the nazis yeah yeah and things like that but yeah, anyway, I'm waffling. Um, a four out of five on the bad date movie scale from me. It's a tricky one. I mean, it's not. I mean, it's not that tricky. It's clearly going to be a four or a five in terms of how bad it is. Yeah. Um, if I was to say a five, obviously, as you say, there are films which are worse than this, but they're mm. almost like five plus. Right. Um, the there are there are films with ha- which have rape scenes in things like uh, Last House on the Left and I Spin Your Grave. Yeah. Where the rape scenes are horrendous, but they're done in, I, I don't want to say a respectful way, but in this, they're done almost as if it's as light-hearted as the guinea pigs. Yeah, pig it's like a and throwaway like, thing. Yeah, this, it's, like the, it? it's like you can't just do a throwaway rape scene and, and, and make it okay. And the scenes go, as we said before, they're going for so long. Attracted so well. that, would, that would make me say, not a good date film. Having said that, sitting here... With yourself watching it and pointing <laughs> yeah. out, like I said, we had a great date, me and you watching this. Yes. Um, that could potentially work in a way that, say, Cannibal Holocaust is a great movie. There's very few occasions where you could point out errors in Cannibal mm. Holocaust. Yeah. Whereas this, it's just errors upon errors. Yeah. So you might be able to enjoy it, but I, rather than giving it the five that I would have given it, I'm going to g- agree with you and say oh, okay. four because of that balance of the rape scenes are horrendous and going for way too long. 
but there's enough bad filmmaking that when you're just watching the film, it's just horrendous and yeah. therefore horrendous in a good way, like silliness yeah. upon bad acting, upon bad filmmaking, upon more silliness. It's not upsetting, let's put it that way, no, at all. Yeah. So, and and yeah. paradoxically, I think, if that's the word I want to use, there's other moments where they try and make it... Um, Upsetting. It's upsetting. not at all. I'm not upsetting. Like the nails being taken off oh. is, as we say, like, please stop torturing me. <laughs> so when they're trying to be upsetting, they're not. <laughs> or like the baby being shot. Yeah, uh, it was just t- it's too absurd. Or like like the scene with the guy getting hit with the frying pan. Obviously, after that, I assume it's his sister. Yeah, or maybe his girlfriend. I don't know. I think it's his girlfriend. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, she gets raped off screen yeah. by like sort of a Nazi officer. And then she's dispatched by being shot in an area of the body that you probably don't want to get shot. Now, you're not likely to die being shot in that part of your body. But no. still, it's like he's pointing a gun at her pubes. There's no way you could possibly take that seriously. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. When it attempts to be serious, it's laughable. Yes. So, um, for a Nazi exploitation film, I would say, I mean, it is a bit boring in places, but compared to others, let's put it this way, it's it's a lot more entertaining. It's a bit of a laugh riot, not one to be taken seriously. Probably not a good date movie, yeah, I would this, say. This has ups and downs, oh, yeah. whereas something like Love Cam 7 is consistently boring. So at least Pretty this much. has its moments. It doesn't have the Commandant, though. I would love the Commandant. The Commandant from Love Camp 7. Love Camp 7. <laughs> love Camp 7. Yeah, love that guy. But yeah, the film's boring as all fuck. <laughs> now, if you wanted to own this on DVD, obviously it's not available on Blu-ray, although someone like Vinegar Syndrome wants to probably if they release this eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, now, if you own Region 1, so you're in America, or that sort of similar part of the world, it is available from a company called Exploitation Digital as SS Hell Camp. Now, if you're Region 2, which is UK, Europe, etc., it's available from Another World Entertainment. Now, apparently you can buy this as an individual DVD, but you can also buy it in a box set with other similar films. Can't you, Tom? Yes, you can. I (laughs) highly recommend that box set. It's got brilliant artwork. (laughs) (laughs) It does have really brilliant artwork. Yeah, I agree. You say It's it's all written in Italian on the back. Yeah. Yeah, You get the general gist. (laughs) Yeah, so that's with uh, Gestapo's Last Orgy, SS Experiment Camp, and a another it's like ss love camp nine or something random like I that you, mm, i don't know i get the names it's not a video nasty but it's another nazi exploitation yeah. but they're all very similar um so yeah so if you did want to own multiple films like this and let's face it apart from ss experiment camp they're all pretty hard to find that box set is a good find because it has the some of not all but some of the main ones it's a good collective thing i, I wouldn't bother buying those ones individually Yes. <laughs> no, probably not. No. 